<laughs> All right, so it's my great pleasure to be here. So um, um, I, I would like to give you some taste of uh, uh, scientific approach to semiconductor, superconductor, quantum hardware. So this work is done in collaboration. So I'm affiliated with uh, Krakow University of Technology and uh, there's also my company, Quantum Hardware Systems. So I'm boking, uh, w working on, on such type of systems. Yeah. Uh, right. Maybe you can go to full screen mode uh, with it. Uh, screen, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me move on. Can I go to the next slide? No. F11, full screen mode. So how, how I can proceed? Let me move to the next slide. Uh, all right, so do I go, no, I go in the wrong direction, right, I'm sorry. Right. So uh, the co uh, today I will give the sh uh, some comparison of existing quantum technologies and I will specify a particular position, particular evaluation of semiconductor single electron devices and then I will also uh, try to merge this, uh, uh, this approach with uh, superconducting uh, qubits. So in, in that context, the, the, the quantum neural networks and quantum graphs also will appear. And uh, at the very end uh, of my talk, I will give introduction, uh, I will give some uh, description of, of interface between Josephson junction and semiconductor chain of, of, of dots. All right, so. Right, so basically uh, we have various uh, uh, possibilities in the, f uh, in the framework of semiconductor quantum dots. We can uh, implement classical and quantum artificial life. We can implement uh, quantum computation schemes, uh, uh, quantum communication, quantum metrology. We can construct uh, classical and quantum neural networks. And then we can uh, think about uh, hybrid uh, classical quantum algorithms and and right now, my, my speciality is fundamental modeling of, of such structures. So basically, uh, the current situation is that, quite obviously, uh, the, 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 the IBM quantum experience and, and, and Google approach to quantum computation uh, takes lead among uh, various existing quantum technologies. However, however, one thing should be said that the scheme of the size of Josephson junctions is it's rather in mesoscopic scale more than nan in nanoscale. And it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult to scale it down uh, due to the fact that we, we need to use a source of vector potential field, which we, knew we, we need to use coils, essentially. So, uh, and this is spacey. On the other hand, uh, semiconductors give us a, a very a good way of compactification. Most recent CMOS technologies use field effect transistor with 10 nanometers of channel length. So, uh, so this, uh, and also uh, the, the there's various approach to uh, in cro uh, to cryogenic applications. So this, uh, this, so th there is a, a idea that is really coming back. The idea, idea of position-based qubits that was initially implemented by Fujisawa and PETA in 2003 and 2004. So, uh, well, one feature should, uh, supposed to be uh, underlined is that semiconductors are quite noisy and, and superconductor is essentially microscopic quantum state, so which, which has quite low number of noise. So one can think about possible merging of those two technologies, like, like a connecting of two quantum chips by uh, some sort of interface, and this will be uh, described later. Okay, so what's, what's the essential idea? So basically we have a field defect transistor, so we have source and drain, and we inject a single electron to source and it, it, it flows back and forth. So, so then the information, quantum information is encoded as a a superposition of uh, two uh, maximum localized wave functions, so-called Vanier functions, maximum localized functions on the left, and maximum localized wave function on the right. 
So that's where this, this name uh, position based qubit uh, comes from. So, um, so then uh, it's, it's by choosing proper polarizing voltages, we can generate various types of landscapes and in which given electron uh, wave packet lives. And in that way we can, uh, we, we can perform uh, various types of uh, quantum operations. So uh, then uh, the, I will not give description about superconducting qubits since everybody is quite aware, uh, is quite well known. So I assume the knowledge uh, of, of, of the technology. But then, uh, then, then there is a question how to, uh, uh, I mean, create an interface. And the, 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 essential, uh, the essential problem is that semiconductor electronics is driven by electric field uh, as a controlling parameter and uh, superconducting electronics is using vector potential. And it's, it's, as it's well known, it's quite easy to kill superconductivity by applying some, uh, volt, uh, some voltage uh, uh, that is above uh, the size of superconducting gap. So the idea is that we are using Josephson junction like superconductor, uh, non-superconductor, superconductor. And uh, so we, we interface this Josephson junction with a uh, two or more coupled quantum dot system that is controlled by external voltage electrodes. So, uh, so in that way, the electron moves back and forth and it generates uh, electric field and uh, vector potential that makes phase imprint and uh, modifies Andrew bound state in Josephson junction. So uh, of course, uh, one should be fully aware about the scale of those devices. So like if you consider two quantum dot system, in most recent like technologies, you can obtain even two nanometer of channel length, but let's say in transistors in, in such laptops as this one, this size of uh, channel length is in the range of 10 nanometers. And uh, like if you, if you have uh, the superconductivity, you are dealing basically with the size of superconducting coherence length that is let's say 300 nanometers. So you, you can put uh, many quantum dots aligned. Nevertheless, I'm just exploiting such simple model. So, uh, so you, could, you, could see, you could see this, this concept. So basically, uh, I also pre-assume that the superconductivity state is the lowest in uh, this non-superconducting region. So that's, that's why the external magnetic field and the electric field can penetrate this re region more effectively than in, in case of, of a kind of like bulk superconductors on the left and the right. So actually, I assume that this electric field can penetrate the, so there are four nodes in my model. So it's only present in, in node one and two. So we have a four possible channels of interaction. Yeah, so basically you can think about this scheme uh, of so-called electrostatic interface between Josephson junction and, and semiconductor quantum dot system. So you have a semiconductor nanowire and on the top uh, you, have, you have placed metallic gates. Of course, they are insulated by, by insulator. You have a single electron that's here and here. And then this system can be interfaced. Well, th so this is so-called ele electrostatic interface, and but you can think about uh, uh, you know s rot roton, roton cube, semiconductor qubit, position-based qubit. You have also various gates placed on the top, and then uh, you have a wave packet of single or many electrons. So basically, you will deal with quantization of magnetic flux inside. So if you interface this system <coughs> with uh, flux based the Josephson junction, then by means of flux, this interaction will take place. So this is a little bit alternative approach. Yeah, so, so, so then of course, you can also consider uh, the systems to be placed in external uh, uh, resonant cavity that also can help uh, to entangle qubits and also does protect the quantum information. Nevertheless, I will not uh, speak too much on, on this topic today. Yeah, so you have also topological protection of quantum information. Yeah, and, and then of course you can, uh, due to 
uh, current progress in, in nanoengineering, we, you, you can construct various types of quantum uh, dot systems with various topologies, and then you can, uh, you can inspect how the sy system uh,
Josephson junction. So this is direction uh, in this direction of 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 like connection of of construction of interface for the, those two quantum chips with two different technologies, which I have mentioned at ver at the beginning. So basically, one has uh, like six voltages that uh, control the state of quantum swap gate. It's due to Coulomb interaction. This quantum swap gate. Uh, plus, we have the uh, controlling signals that control the state of Josephson junction. So they do have such system. So, yeah. So then, uh, this is most minimalistic model that this. So this is. Uh, so I describe Josephson effect by four nodes. So this is naturally eight by eight matrix, which is Bogoliov uh, uh, uh which express Bogoliov Dijon formalism in tight binding approximation. And then I have to interlink this uh, model with, uh, with quantum swap gate, so they have to, to take into account the, uh, the tensor products of, of Hilbert spaces and then int uh, electrostatic interaction, which, uh, which takes place between those two systems. So we have the hoping terms for two single electron lines that, that, that uh, are represented by two qubits. Right, so then, uh, of course, uh, you can study the, the, the Hamiltonian and the, 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 the quantum entanglement. So uh, obviously the, the eigenenergies of the system uh, of two, two single electron lines are dependent on distance. So that's, that's kind of spectrum of, of eigenenergies. And also the, they do depend on superconducting order parameter. Well, uh, of course, they are dependent on the spectrum is dependent on distance between two single electron lines. That's that's given by uh, by this uh, this plot. And so basically, we are dealing with six voltage parameters plus magnetic field plus microwave pulses controlling uh, the, the the state of of, of Josephson uh, junction. So so we have to uh, to to make our analysis in such type of uh, parameter space. So I. When you do very carefully, um, you can also try to spot the existence of topological phase transition in the system. So here, since you can modulate the superconducting order parameter strength, and also at the same time you can modify the, the voltages applied to electrostatic gates. So basically, you can also obtain the exchange of exchange of uh, uh, excited energy with ground energy. So that's a good signature of possible uh, topological state existence in the system. Yeah, so, uh, so then, of course, you can play with our parameters, like, uh, like hoping term in uh, two single electron lines and to, to study the, the eigenenergy spectra. So also, you, you see, by electrostatic tuning, only by changing TS parameter, you can ex exchange ground and excited energy, which is, uh, which is a good feature. Uh, well, you also can, uh, can uh, I, I mean, uh, by proper uh, application of uh, electrostatic, uh, by proper application of voltage applied to the single electron uh, qubits, you also get uh, tunability of its energies in, in the way as it is given by that picture. Yeah, so in conclusions, so there are some indications that system shows topological phase transition and, and thus probably have topological protected states, which makes it quite excellent candidate for very massive uh, implementation of, of topological qubits, um, especially that technology of production of Josephson junctions is well mastered, as well as uh, CMOS, uh, uh, CMOS uh, nanotechnologies. Uh, then there, you can explain this interface between semiconductor quantum chip and superconducting uh, and superconducting semiconductor and superconducting quantum chip. So you, you can go into possible generalization of quantum computer architecture. So for certain operations, the, the, the superconducting qubits could be better as they're less noisy. Nevertheless, I mean, semiconductor qubits can operate very quickly. So that's that's you, you can try to to use best of features of, of those two technologies and also make those two chips to, to be uh, to be to, to communicate uh, in a well way. And also, um, you can use change the paradigm of control of Josephson junction. So in the way that right now it's, it's controlled by vector potential. So you can 
you can try to use this uh, electrostatic qubit and then uh, control it also by means of electric field that is affecting the state of neighbor of position based qubit semiconductor position based qubit that affects Josephson junction so that way you can get a quite a big compactification of of the structures which is possibly a, 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 a good feature because you want to, you want to have it as small as it is and there is a problem with scalability of waveguides that, that, that direct signals to superconducting qubits. Yes, there is va various type of work on, on that field. <coughs> I mean, some of these models which I presented has analytical uh, solutions, so that's quite good to have it. Yeah, I also right now try to think about uh, extension of Kiskit, so in that sense that it can cover this interface which was just described. Yeah, so uh, there, there are various uh, new directions emerging from presented concept. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's uh, yeah. And, and also I, I would like to advertise the coming conference and uh, that is from 9th to, to 15th uh, July 2023 about, about mathematical physics and, 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 uh, and technology. Uh, so this is hyper complex seminar so that the, this conference has ambition to, to, to interlink the community of physicists, mathematician, and engineer. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's you are uh, welcome to, to be present at this conference. So I think that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Technological control with the uh, electrostatic control of the your you mentioned it, yeah. Just say some more word, yeah. Yeah, well, so so basically, there are two approaches. Uh, you create your uh, quantum dot system uh, using global foundries or well-established CMOS technology. So then you need to violate the, the the parameters of design parameters in order to create a, a, a single electron device. Uh, so that's one approach. Then, then the CMOS technology is very well mastered. So uh, uh, I bet I still you have to use the, the design tools that are uh, commercially available right now. Another way is, of course, to create your own quantum dots. And uh, that's, I guess, the various institutes across the world already have experience in, with single electron devices and implemented in, in, in quantum dot system. So that's, I would say, there are two main uh, branches of of, of, of implementation of, of, of semiconductor quantum dot system. And then, of so course, the one, two, three are the quantum dots. one, two, uh, yes, it's, uh, so those are four quantum dots. And, but of course, you have to place them on one chip. So <laughs> with uh, uh, superconducting Josephson junctions. So that's. Uh, How much is the difference between quantum dots? And What's the size? Yeah. Well, um, I would say. I, I, I think I start thinking about 10 nanometers, uh -huh. uh, so it's somehow, I mean, the, the most problematic is design of, of voltage uh, gates that uh, polarize this quantum dot system because you don't want them to affect you. Uh, I mean, there's some noise coming from, the, uh, from this uh, gates and that's a bit problematic in, in, in the real operation that, uh, so yeah, I mean, but since this system of quantum dots is well mastered like by Grenoble people and many others, I would say, well, this is doable. I think everything's supposed to be on one chip and also in the same programming environment. So I pre-assume 50, 100 millikelvin. So it's quite challenging. So you need to get a quantumness of the structure of semiconductor quantum dot system and quantumness of Josephson junction. And then you need to be able to spot this the formation of underbound state that is uh, due to, due to uh, this electron uh, movement. So of course you can amplify this, uh, this mechanism. You can put thousands of semiconductor quantum dots across the Josephson junction line. Simply because uh, you also can have this argument that one moving electron or hole is not enough. But still, you should remember that this, since distance between quantum dots is so small and sometimes you can apply voltage difference even in fraction of volts then uh, the electric gradient is huge 
So actually, you can uh, you can get uh, movement of relativistic electrons even in a such type of system. So definitely, you do have a means to to generate uh, deformation of Andrew bound state. I, but uh, this this process needs to be better studied. I mean, uh, I mean definitely deeper approach than just Wishboard potential concept. Nevertheless, yeah. Well, I would say it's also a good starting point. Uh, just a quick question. So, on the at a plenary talk on Monday, we heard about the importance of noise for quantum computing. So you can you can add more and more qubits if you like, but if you don't address the noise, then you're actually it's just diminishing returns. Yeah. So can you say a little bit about about noise in this system and how controllable it is? Well, so yeah, sure. I mean, uh, there was there is a work of uh, so basically. There's very face protection against the noise. So for example, I, I, there's already well-studied work of uh, implementation of position-based qubits by means of a couple of quantum dots, as I have mentioned. So y you take two uh, quantum dot systems, uh, two position-based qubits, and you make them to interact with a, a quantum electromagnetic cavity. So actually what you do obtain is uh, there is cer in certain configuration there is um, you increase uh, the coherence time that's the first thing and then the secondly you, you, you obtain the uh, so you can get entangled those qubits by means of, of this uh, you know uh, interaction with electromagnetic cavity since since a photon field is is, is entangled with a position based qubit that's, that's, that's also so so if you if you apply this uh, the whole kind of interface, place it to a resonant cavity, uh, pro most likely a superconducting resonant cavity, then you simply, it's simply expected that this will bring increase of decoherence time, which is highly welcome. So, um, yeah, I would say, um, yeah, so this is one, of, one way of thinking. Second way of thinking is that actually you are using only this uh, single electron devices to to set the positions of of, of of electrons, and then instead of their position, you are using their spin. So uh, so that's also approach, and this approach is also mastered by Grenoble people. They have shown the CMOS uh, uh, in, uh, implementation of qubits uh, in CMOS uh, with using spin degrees of freedom. So, so you, you, you can try to exercise actual usage also both as well. I mean, spin and, and, posi and position. So that's, that's, that are possible schemes. And uh, of course, there's, there's some generalizations of this work by, uh, by, by error correction. So one, one should, uh, should look in literature. But essentially, the system of coupled um, position-based qubits can be quite easily mapped to a spin because it's two by two matrix. And uh, so you can, you can quite make a, uh, quite a good analogy with a spin, uh, a spin qubit. And then having this analogy with spin qubit, you can use the design of, of error protection code. Uh, so also that is also implemented by hardware. So, so you, you, you can go in, in this direction. So, so I would say, I mean, uh, to be very honest, semiconductor industry does believe in the semiconductors. <laughs> <laughs> more than in Josephson junctions. And, uh, you know, th most recent uh, technologies bring this three nanometers of channel length in field defect transistor, which is quite amazing, I would say. So th this really guarantees you high compactification, and high compactification also means high speed of operation. So, yeah. Thank you.